Hello friends, uh, welcome to the second session of research problem. Students, we have already studied about the research problem in the session 1. In session 1, we had gone through what is research problem, what is the importance of research problem in the research methodology, what are the components of the research problem and what are the selecting criteria for the research problem. These are the things we have already studied in the session 1. In this session students we are going to see what is the necessity for the research problem. So in this session we are going to see some of the aspect for deciding the research problem pertaining to the solution. So students necessity of defining the research problem is mainly studied for the solutions which is to be made in the research work. So quite often we all are here that a problem which is clearly stated or clearly defined is a problem half done or half solved. That is the main importance of defining the research problem. Unless and until you know the research problem, you are not going to see for the solution. So to find out the solution first, you must know the problem carefully or you must know about the research problem in your research work. So, this statement signifies that the need for defining a research problem in order to solve the research problem in a proper manner, you should know that what is a research problem is. So, the problem which is to be investigated must be defined unambiguously for that will help to discriminate the relevant data for, from the irrelevant ones. Students, many times what happened when the researcher knows the problem carefully, he can see about the relevant data for that particular problem. For example, in the last session, we had discussed about the uh, various children which are working in the metropolitan city. So, whenever we are going to see for that research project, it is a survey based research where we are going to take account of many working children in the metropolitan city in the year 2020. So, what about the relevant data then it seems to be? Relevant data means we have to see that in the year 2020, we have to select that cities which are studying the uh, problems which are related to the working children. So, we should not collect the data for another year like 1920 or 2021 because our problem is actually target only in the year of 2020. Also, our research will only target for the working children. Also, our research only target for metropolitan cities. So, we have to think of what the problems belongs to. And according to that, we, we can able to discriminate the relevant data from irrelevant one. That is what the beauty of defining the research problem. So, this is what the necessity of defining the research problem. When you define the research problem, the researcher should strike or target the question like, for solving that particular research problem, what data are to be collected? Suppose your research problem is survey of the working children in a metropolitan city in year 2020. So what data is supposed to be collected? The data of working children of where, where from the metropolitan cities. In which year means when? The year is 2020. So this is what when your problem is defined carefully, you can able to have an idea that which kind of data is required to complete that problem, to solve that problem, to satisfy that problem, then and then only we can get the solution out of it. So the necessity of defining the research problem mainly strike the research questions which is in front of you like what data are to be collected, what characteristic of data are relevant and need to be studied, what relations are to be explored and what techniques are to be used for that purpose or for solving that problem. So, uh, for technique is concerned student, we have the different uh, actual aspect to study or to uh, see the techniques involved in defining the research problem. So, first of all, you must know that what are the criteria for selecting the research problem? Question come that what are 
the necessity of defining the research problem the basic necessity of defining the research problem is the researcher must know what the problem is then and then only he would work out on it to find out the solution so what data is to be collected what characteristic data is relevant what relations i mean to say that there are certain variables which control one variable could control the another variable and these are the parameters which need to be explored in the research so what are the relations as like that what is the relation of working children in the metropolitan city in that particular year so there are certain aspects that we need to explore and that is the that is the reason why what relations are to be explored that is also been defined carefully so whenever the researcher is clear with his problem he can able to find out the solution so while defining the research problem what techniques are to be used that could also be come up that suppose if i want to check out the students which are uh, or the working children in the particular metropolitan city then i may required some interview method some techniques which i have to go on through i have to go to the school i have to go to the hotels i have to go to the different working places where these children are basically working so these are the techniques then when i come to know about my problem i can able to clear with the techniques which is to be employed for solving that problem and that is what the main thing you should strike upon when the defining your research problem is so these are the question the researcher first know that answer of this questions and similar question then and then only the person can pursue for the research work and the solution or outcome to be made so defining the research problem properly is basically a prerequisite for any study and it is a step of highest importance that is the reason why whenever we are going to define a certain research problem we have to formulate the problem so that we can get more essential uh, which is the solution is so formulation of a problem is often more essential than its solution once you can formulate the problem carefully you can able to get a correct solution out of it and that is the reason why this is the important necessity of defining the problem that when you know the problem you can able to reach to the correct solution everybody decides the problem everybody define the problem but they may not get the correct solution out of it so to get the correct solution you have to formulate the problem carefully and then you can able to reach to the correct solution it is only on careful detailing of the research problem that we are working out the research design can smoothly carry on and all the consequential steps involved while doing the research so it is necessary that students that we have to see the problem carefully we have to work out on the research design that what are the next step to solve this problem what are the experimental data is required what are the materials what are the methods what are the techniques what are the experimental setups what are the important things which are required to solve this problem that the researcher first know before he start for the investigation once he knew that then he can pursue with the research work very correctly so it is only on careful detailing the research problem that we can work out the research design and smoothly carry out the consequential steps which are involved in that so here student now let us focus on the techniques what are the techniques which involved in defining a research problem while defining a research problem properly there are prerequisite for any study it mean that step by step we have to have to reach to the solution so formulation of a problem is more essential than the solution so it is only a careful detailing that research problem could be worked so here the techniques involved in defining a research problem these are the five different techniques which are required for defining a research problem and these techniques will lead to lead you to solve the problem correctly so for defining a research problem or selecting a research problem in uh, in a easy sense we can say that you have to follow these five techniques let us see what are these techniques are the these techniques are basically statement of a problem in general way understanding the nature of the problem surveying the available literature developing the ideas through discussion 
and rephrasing the research problem into a working proposition. These are the five important techniques which are involved in defining a research problem. Let us see that how these techniques could be explored. Let us see one by one. The first is statement of a problem in a general way. The problem should be stated in a broad general way, students, keeping a view that either some practical concern or some scientific or intellectual interest to, uh, will be available. In case of social research, it is considered or, or advisable to uh, have some field observations, some sort of preliminary surveys, what is often called as a pilot surveys. So, this will get the researcher an idea about the aura of the problem, about the depth of the problem and then and then only he could able to formulate that problem in a general way. So, I know that whenever a researcher who is not at all uh, any experience about the research, he may encounter a different difficulties while formulating the research problem. Now, in such a case, what that researcher should do? He will have to take care of his research problem but if the researcher can himself state the problem or he can seek the help from uh, the guide or expert person and that expert person is known as guide or the guidance of the guide or the subject expert for accomplishing this task because by expertise in that particular area the particular guide will guide that researcher how to select the problem or how to formulate it in a manner so that he will get a correct solution. So, the first thing is that that statement of a research problem in general way, you should have the certain depth, in-depth survey or certain preliminary work has to be done so that to study this problem in a general way and then you can able to formulate your problem. If the researcher find any difficulty to do so, he can seek a help from a guiding teacher or subject expert. So, this is the first technique how the statement of a problem will be done in a general way. Second is understanding the nature of a problem. Student in the last session only I have told you that, that there are two, uh, there are uh, the research problems which are exist in a two different types. It means that the research problem has a two different nature. The first nature is state of a problem and second nature is it is controlled by the variable. So, every time while selecting the research problem, we should know the nature of the problem. Understanding its origin, its nature, clearly discuss with who first raised this problem in order to find out the solution. Because in the world right now, where the researcher research is doing from the ancient time, there is no such a question which has been raised very first time. So, somewhere, some, somewhere, somehow, someone has raised the question first. So, we have to understand its origin. We have to understand the nature of the problem. We have to see that who raised this question first. We have to see that how this problem originally come out and with which objective in view. So, discussion with those who have a good knowledge about this problem or concern with this similar problem will definitely help you out that what will be the limitations or what will be the advantages to take up this problem for your research work. So, you can discuss again it with guide or an expert person or a person who has a knowledge in that particular area. So, while understanding the nature of the problem, you just see its origin. You have to see that who raised that problem first. Then you have to discuss with the experts who has knowledge about it. The researcher should also keep in a view that environment which that research problem belongs to within which the research problem has been studied or understood. So, to do so, we have to understand the nature of the research problem. Third and very important thing that whenever you come up with your problem, you should know or you should survey the available literature. Literature is an important source for the researcher because literature help you out to take up the certain necessary material or which will be helpful for your research work. So, while proceeding for the research work actually, you have to define the research problem. While defining the research problem, if you survey the available literature, it will help you a lot. How? Let us see. 
all available literature concerning the problem must necessarily be surveyed and examined so that you can come up with the certain shortcomings or certain benefits or certain uh, uh, what you are going to say that a cost which is involved in that what the time required uh, for completing that task so everything because available literature mainly focus on the work done by the other researcher so you can also able to know that whether this concept or whether this subject or whether this problem is controversial whether this problem is overdone whether this will be lead to the formulation of the objective or whether this subject will lead to the solution or not this clearly will get an idea by means of the literature survey that is what the importance of surveying the available literature so it will be well conversant with relevant theories in the field reports records everything if you can able to see it will gives us a clue to solve the research problem so that is the reason why surveying the available literature is a very very important task in the in the defining a research problem so to find out what data and other material has to be done you have to know that what data are available often serves to be a very narrow to the problem itself so it will uh, may working as a technique that might be used because if that data is already available what is the use of collecting it again because research is something which is new knowledge you are going to give to the world so that's why by surveying the available literature you come to know that uh, according to that problem what are the things to be already done that we have to skip it out so that's why knowing the data which is available based on that research problem we should skip it out and we have to think for the new solutions to that problem so that is also come to know by means of surveying the available literature for indicating the type of difficulties as i already told you that what are the shortcomings what are the limitations what are the difficulties encountered in the present study as also be the possible analytical shortcomings that could be known before you start with your research work and that is very very helpful for doing your research work as such that is the reason why surveying the available literature is one of the technique involved in defining the research problem if you survey before you can able to define your research problem in a proper manner therefore as uh, we have uh, seen before that understand the nature of the problem surveying the available literature and seeking the help from the guide these are some of the techniques which are involved in defining a research problem proceeding to the next it is developing the idea through discussion students when you are going to uh, discuss with the expert person or with your guiding teacher the discussion often produces a useful information and various new ideas which could be developed the person who will decide uh, in alone that is better to be discussed with someone and take out some innovative ideas which will lead to the good solution or correct solution of your research problem so discuss the problem with your colleagues other than who have a enough experience in the same area or working in the similar problem known as a experience survey so this is the way that you will come up with the new ideas and it will through this new ideas the discussion will be developed and this discussion will lead to the certain solution to your problem so people with a rich experience are they are in a position to enlighten the researcher on different aspects of his proposed study and their advice and comments will be very valuable for the researcher that is the reason why we have to seek help from your colleagues from the expert person from the experience uh, professors or the guide who will help you to develop the ideas through the discussion and by that mean you can reach to your solution or the ideas which will lead to find out your solution for your research problem as such so the last and very important technique which is based on all other four rephrasing of your research problem for example as uh, till now we have studied that uh, first of all seek the help from the research guide understand the nature of the problem then we have studied the survey of literature then we have already been as like in the uh, before slide we have studied develop the ideas the same way when you have gone through all these steps you can come up to the conclusion yes i got the certain research problem
so when you got the research problem to rephrase the research problem into working proposition you have to rephrase the problem into analytical or operation terms and it is not a difficult task once you uh, discuss with your guide once you discuss with your colleagues once you see the all uh, survey literature you will get the certain idea about what are the limitations what are the shortcomings what are the benefits out of it so that you can easily will uh, go through the different materials method experimental setups and you can be expect that yes by this mode of plan or mode of action yes i will get the outcome so through rephrasing it the researcher put the research problem in a specific term as possible so that it may become a operationally viable and it may help in the development of working hypothesis this is what the beauty of the techniques involved in the research problem so students when you have gone through all the uh, techniques which are involved in framing the research problem finally you have to inculcate the entire ideas and rephrase your problem into new which will give you a direction to proceed for your research work so this is the way that you can able to rephrase the research problem and by rephrasing research problem you can come to know that how this research problem could be solved and what should be the action plan for it so in the next session we are definitely see that what is the research plan out of it so in this session we had gone through about selecting the research problem necessity of the research problem and techniques behind it thank you so much